Well, it has been a minute since I've made a video. Just, I don't know, life's been happening. Audi's kind of pissed me off recently. But here we are. We are in two brand new 2023 Audi Q7s. Figured I'd do a comparison of the premium versus the premium plus so you can see the differences and also get an idea of what's changed from the 22 models to 23. It's springtime, or at least it's starting to feel that way in Georgia. So pollen season is upon us. Everything has a nice neon color. Everything has a fresh pollen coat to it. <laughs> it's also getting a little bit warmer. But with that being said, let me show you guys. I've got a 2023 entry level model premium Q7, and then I've got a 2023 premium plus Q7. So you guys can see the differences, get an idea of which one might work best for you if you're in the market for one, or if you're just curious to know what the Q7s are like, then this should answer some of those questions for you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Michael. I'm with Audi Augusta. Let's get this one started. So these are your key fobs. Obviously, you cannot tell which car is which by looking at the key fob. But the key fobs have a good look to them. They're the same as the 2022 models. You've got aluminum brush siding here on the sides of each one. And then this gloss black. It feels like plastic. And then you've got the aluminum Audi badges here in the center. They have good weight to them. So if it's in your pocket, you don't really have to feel, uh, fiddle around for it. You definitely know it was in there. On the left... I've got the 2023 Q7. This one is the Premium Plus, so this is the mid-tier trim level. And then here on the right, this is the entry-level model. This is the Premium. If you look at both of them closely, you can tell some of the differences. Give you guys a side view here. On the right, that is the Orca Black Metallic, and then on the left, that is the Glacier White. If you're not from the South, we're in that time of the year where it's going to be 75 and sunny one day and 50 degrees is the high the next. So God knows what to expect. And everything's going to get a dusting of pollen. So your car is going to have a nice yellow tint to it, as will your phone, because I'm recording this and my phone is currently covered in little particles of pollen already. And I'll show you guys the window stickers as well. So with that on the 23s, it still comes with the 19 inch wheels, which is what this one has on it now. On the left is the Premium Plus, so that's the mid-tier trim level package. When you do the Premium Plus, you can opt in for those 20 inch wheels. So you've got the 20s on the white one and the 19s on the black. And if I back up, you can get an idea of how that looks fitting in the wheel arches. Big updates for the 23 model. You get adaptive cruise control now. You don't have to opt in for the Premium Plus package to get the adaptive cruise control functions. You can get it on the entry level model. All you have to do is get a convenience package. You're also going to get the eight cameras that come with the car. So this one does have the convenience package on it. So you've got three cameras on the front. You got the three cameras on the back. And then you've got the cameras that also look at your wheels. So those are tucked in. There's one of the cameras right there. Full LED lighting is something that's now available with the 2023 models. So you've got LED lights in the front, LED daytime running lights in the front. So you have the exact same headlights on both cars. Currently that 2023 Premium Plus, the mid-tier, it's supposed to come with the Matrix LED headlights, but due to part shortages, Currently, they are crediting customers the money back for them. This entry-level model, too, this black one here, also has the four-cylinder turbo engine. So, mid-200 horsepower, mid-200 foot-pounds of torque. I, don't, uh, I think it's 252 and, like, 269. And then, on the right, you've got the three-liter turbocharged V6 engine in this one. That's gonna be three, uh, 335 horsepower and 359 pounds of torque. Both cars are mated to the Tiptronic transmission through Audi. It's an eight speed automatic transmission. Gear changes are seamless, so they're both gonna drive smoothly as you would expect from any large German SUV. And taking a look. Interior hasn't changed. 
from the 22s to 23 models. Memory seating for both people. Eight-way power adjustable front seats with lumbar support. You've got four settings for that right there. Audi's virtual cockpit is standard in the Q7s. Popping into this one. This is an entry-level model. So showing y'all the window sticker. If you look at the window sticker, 2023 Q7 45, the 45 is the indicator for what engine that you have in the car. 45 is the uh, two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. And you can see the price there at the bottom. Subtotal $64,050. That is what the convenience package adds. There's really no point to order one without that convenience package. It's $2,000, but it makes the car so much better. <laughs> So, I mean, you get your adaptive cruise control, lane guidance, your heated steering wheel, and then your top view camera system with the 360 view. That 360 view is what everybody loves to look at in the videos. So you can pull up that 3D image, get a bird's eye view, scroll around, and then you've got that image there on the right, which is just a fixed image. And this is all taken from all eight cameras and then the six sensors on the, or eight sensors on the car. And then all your climate controls, of course, are going to be here in this bottom menu. That little three dot button is how you're going to access your heated steering wheel. If you need to set the rear temperature, you can. It's three zone automated climate control. One zone for the driver, one for the passenger, and then one for the rear of the car. Um, passengers in the rear can set the temperature themselves or you can set it for them simply by just touching the rear right here. And then it goes to rear view mode right there. And getting out of that. Otherwise, there's all your temperature controls. Everything you need to do is right here at the bottom. These are your shortcuts here at the top. The auto start or stop feature that they put on every car now, which every person in America seems to hate, but they are adamant on putting it on every car regardless, it is right there. If you want to turn that off, they make it very easy. Unfortunately, it does not remember that you turned it off. So when you turn the car off and on, you still have to push that button. Looking at the back, it's still the same. It's five inches of adjustability in the rear of the car. So if you look in the back, you've got these handles here underneath the middle. You pull these up and then that allows you to adjust the second row wherever you want to have it. So you can either maximize your space in the third row or use the second row. Third row is electronically controlled. So there are seat controls tucked right behind the second row here. There's some on the other side as well. And then you've also got one in the actual trunk. Basically got to slam them. And then there are your controls for the third row. And the third row, as you can see, if, if you don't have it up, you would never know it was even back there. It's tucked there in the back. I wish y'all could see how much pollen is just floating around the air. I can see all of it. it makes everything look green. Then on the entry level model, you don't have any LED lights inside the door sills. Car's yelling at me because I'm holding the key. But that's your entry level model. That's the premium. Audi does the premium, premium plus and prestige. Heading on over to the mid tier, this is gonna be our premium plus model. So this has the three liter turbocharged V6 engine, as I said earlier, mid 300 horsepower, 359 foot pounds of torque. Don't quote me on the exact numbers, but that's giving you an idea. Quattro oil will drive. You can expect that on any Q7 that you purchase. You don't have to option in for that. That's just a feature that Audi's gonna give you. This one's got the towing package on it. It was a trailer. It does have 6,000 pounds of towing capacity. If you do the V6 engine, the four cylinder, I believe is 3,000 pounds. Nothing changes in the back. But this is how the car is gonna look if you have both the second and third row down. That second row doesn't fold completely flat and that's primarily just to keep things from sliding into the front of the car. But there's your controls for the back. 
This is your cargo mat if you ever needed a cargo mat for the third row. When you option in for the Premium Plus package, notice that you're going to get the LED lighting that you can't really see in the daytime, but this exterior right here where the outside trim is LED lit. You go from Audi's audio system to the Bang & Olsen sound system. Still eight-way power adjustable front seats. Now when you option in for that Premium Plus package, it does unlock a few more options that become available to you. You've got a few different wheel options you can choose from. You've also got the executive package, which will give you the four zone climate control. Notice this one is still three zone. So three zone climate control, again, driver, passenger, and the rear. If you get that executive package, that'll give you heated and ventilated seating for the front. So notice that these seats are heated only. You don't have any perforation in the leather. There's no little holes to indicate that you've got ventilated seats. I love the interiors of these cars though. They just, they did, they nailed it with this one. The dual screen displays in the front. Everybody loves those. Leather dash, nothing you feel on the inside of the car feels cheap. Audi is aware of where you put your hands and where you put anything in the car. So they want everything to feel high quality. The leather feels nice. It smells good in here being a new car. Audi actually says they don't do anything to bring that new car smell in. So what you're smelling is just the materials. You've got a full panoramic sunroof. So the full panoramic is, that's gonna come standard with any Q7. So front portion is gonna be your actual sunroof. The back is fixed glass. Do not push these if you're looking at a Q7 ever. They are your microphones if people have pushed those in. Then there are your SOS feature, roadside assistance, and controls to the roof. You can get the premium plus package on the uh, two liter four cylinder engine if you choose. So those options, you can get all these options with the premium plus in the four cylinder engine as well. If you go up to the prestige, the fully loaded version, those only come with the three liter turbo engines. It really just depends on what you want. I can't get over this pollen, man. Everything is currently coated in just a yellow tint. But there's your cameras. There's your eight cameras. Notice the clarity. How to use this high quality cameras. I believe they're 4K. They're definitely HD, but I don't know exactly what 4K would do. They're HD quality cameras. Top view camera system there. You've always got the top view over there on the right. There's your 3D. Same layout, virtual cockpit. Everything looks basically identical to the other Q7. The difference is just gonna be you've got a few more upgrades, so if music is important to you, you'll probably appreciate that Bang Olsen sound system. And if you've got a heavy foot like I do, then you'll appreciate having more power. Your wireless phone charger is tucked right in here. So if you lift up the center armrest, you'll find your wireless phone charger. Still got your little cubby storage down here by your left knee. It's a deep little pocket, so your arm goes in there pretty well. The noise insulation is what's most amazing. You, really, you don't hear any exterior noise. So you can probably tell as soon as I get in the car just by how quiet it gets from the exterior audio. Don't hear anything going by. We are, our location's tucked between two main roads. So we've got a main road there and then we've got a main road on the other side. Notice how you don't hear any of it. So when I get out of the car, you're gonna hear all the exterior noise, wind, cars. It's just the way my uh, phone picks up the audio. When you get in the car, it isolates you from everything in the outside world. It's like a giant sense of relief. Like when you get off work, it's hard to imagine a greater feeling of getting into Q7 than just knowing that you cut ties with your entire day. I'd do the Premium Plus. Personally, that would be the one I'd get. I'd get the bigger engine because it's a big car. The Q7 weighs 6,700 pounds, 6,500 pounds. I mean, it's a big vehicle. Having the extra power and get up and go it doesn't affect fuel mileage too much simply because the car is so large anyway. 
Audi has done a good job as far as redesigning the aerodynamics of it. They opened up the front grille. They did this when they redesigned the cars anyway, but they opened up the front grille to create better airflow through the car. You've got these open grills right here to help cool the brakes and keep air flowing through the front of the car. I mean, just the size in itself, there's no getting over how big it is, but at least they've intelligently designed it. But that's a basic overview. Just giving y'all an idea. Personally, I choose the Premium Plus, but leave a comment. Let me know which one you guys would prefer. I don't think I could do white. Let me know what y'all think. Thanks for watching.